Transmission was recorded live in Cincinnati, Ohio, for Caller Lab's 25th Annual Convention. This is Tape 6, Improving Your Vocal Range, Part 1. We're going to talk about vocal range today. Actually, I'm not going to talk, you're going to sing. Uh, that's the objective. In times past, when I've come, I've done a bunch of lectures, and I've gotten myself thoroughly bored. And I figured you folks had too, so I figured it was time for you to sing. You want to learn how to increase your range, then that's what we're going to do today. I need a little bit of a help from you. We're going to get a seal for what things need to be attended to. Raise your hands if you want to do some singing in this hour. The rest of you are going to have to anyhow, but you, these are the ones that want to. How many of you wish that you had higher notes to sing? How many of you wish you had lower notes to sing? <laughs> all right, so we're getting, we got both ends of the spectrum that we got to deal with here. That's all right, because a person's voice, you're not going to believe this, but a person's voice from top to bottom, a good healthy human voice, should have the range of about three octaves. Most of the songs that you call with range about a sixth, or six notes. Sometimes if they're really exaggerated, they'll go up as much as ten notes. And you've got, oh, probably three times that much range available to you if you can just figure out how to get a hold of it. That'd be kind of a nifty little trick to pull off. Well, I'm kidding you. It, it won't be easy to pull off. It, but it's possible. I want you to conceive that it's possible. Because if your mind can conceive that it's so, your body can make it so. But if your mind can't conceive it, there's no way your body's going to do it. So let's jump on in and talk a little bit about what happens. First, no, we won't jump in and talk. First thing we're going to do is get you up off your seats. You've been sitting already an hour and a half. Let's spread around and let's get ourselves in a circle here. And the first thing you've got to do is to learn how to stand up. Uh, good posture is always an essential part of being able to sing uh, well. And it's especially true in the next session that we talk about the quality of your voice, but it also has a bearing on the range of your voice as well. So the first thing you want to do is to see if you can get your head to be on top of your shoulders. Most of you have a tendency to want to let your head stand in front of your shoulders like this. And some of you are timid enough so that you'd like to stand like this. And neither one of those are particularly healthy. Uh, as far as singing is concerned. Take your hands to the back of your head and you'll find a little knot on the back of your head. Now reach down on your spine and you'll find a lump that may be larger or smaller. Anyway, it's the top vertebrae of your spine. See if you can stretch those two points as far away from each other as possible. Now that you're looking at the floor, <laughs> you want to figure out a way so that you don't have to stand looking at the floor all the time. Anybody knows that a good square dance caller has got to have enough confidence to look somebody in the eye and not look at their belt buckle. Okay, so the trick that you've got to be able to do is to figure out how to stand up while preserving that. So you want to keep your neck long and stand up straight. Now, I just did it for you. Watch me do it again. Here's my, na my natural slouch. Neck's kind of crimped in like this. I stretch my neck long, and then I figure out how to keep that neck long. So that'll put my head back over the top of my shoulders. This fellow right here with the white sweater on just did it. Would you come on out here and be my demonstrator model? That's just what he wanted, right? Would you give us your customary slouch, please? Your name, please? Bruce. Bruce is going to slouch for us here in a nice, comfortable. And you'll notice that he feels right casual and at home. The next thing Bruce is going to do is going to stretch his neck really long. Oh, that's a nice, humble look. <laughs> Okay, now you're going to stand up straight and tall without finding... Now, I'm going to not let you scrunch that up. Now, find your way to stand up tall. Whoop, 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 whoop. How about if you changed your torso a little bit and raised your whole chest? Whoa, look, he has a chest after all. Look at there. Do you still feel like you're looking at the floor? Okay, you feel a little arrogant, do you? Oh, I, always when I get this way, I get looking like I'm looking down my nose at everybody else in the world. Now, find yourself a little bit of balance. There you go. Now, the, the back of his neck is right along. Another way that you can do this, find your partner to your right. Put your hand on the back of their head just like I've put to that person. 
obviously this this circle's got to scrunch in a little bit. Now, if yeah, there's a wife saying, "Get your hands off that." <laughs> okay, now push. The, if you got a hand touching the back of your head, push back against it. Come on, push, push, but don't let the neck scrunch down like that. Okay, now how many of you feel like Frankenstein or the Bride of Frankenstein? Thank you very much. Everybody knows that singers are just a little bit weird, and that'll give you a sense of it. Okay, now you're nice and standing up tall. Can you just kind of shake loose a little bit here? Yeah, get a little wiggle around and let it run up into your shoulders a little bit. All right. Okay, now we're a little bit awake. A little bit awake. The first thing that we've got to do when we're trying to find out about range is to discover that the voice is an awful lot like a car. Uh, it has uh, transmission and it has gas. No, I mean it has uh, transmission and the other part we'll talk about another time. The transmission can either be a standard transmission or it can be an automatic transmission. And I vote for an automatic transmission in a car. Now, everybody knows you get in the car, you start it up, it goes down the road and it goes, mm, 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 and then about that point it's ready to get on the freeway and go up to about 65 or 70 miles an hour. But if you're running down the road and your automatic transmission does this, mm, mm, about that time you don't get on the freeway you get off and you say I got to get this thing fixed and that's what's happening to you folks that have that can't get up to the top of your voice that say I want more high range um, you've gotten yourself stuck in a lower gear the gear transmission come on in folks there's plenty of room everybody's equally embarrassed in here and there's no shyness <laughs> all right then now this the if you can figure out how to make those transitions or allow those trans transitions to take place in your voice, you can get a control of a very, very wide range in your voice. And it actually is easy. I go back and say, if your mind can conceive it, your body can do it. If your mind can't conceive it, then your body won't likely do it. For you ladies that are um, wanting to pick up some range on the bottom of your voice, Let's consider a story that happened to me on when I was first married. I got an old car, and I was going on, I uh, actually had a hard time getting to where I, my reception was in Florida, and I lived out in Utah, and we got broken down, and uh, my wife's uncle gave us a car off of his used car lot. Now, we think he gave it to us because it was an illegal car, and he needed to get out of state because it didn't run very well. We got traveling out of Jacksonville, and we were traveling to Tallahassee, and just... Just as we got out of Jacksonville, the car froze up in third gear. And we figured we had about, uh, well, I don't know, 2,400 miles to go in third gear, and we were a little nervous about that. And we got to Jacksonville, and it seemed like there was a stoplight at the top of every hill. And I seemed to catch every one of those stoplights. So I was sitting there in third gear and just revving the engine and just barely reaching over the top of the hill and getting on to the next one. So the car is getting pretty hot. Well, that's a little bit what's happening to you ladies. You're stuck in third gear and you've got to get back down where you can really get some power in your voice. And that's all it is. You just have to figure out how to do it. Can you, uh, when the vocal folds are set up in a certain fashion, when they're, when they're um, kind of thick and rounded, you'll get a sound that's kind of rumbly in your chest. Would most of you just say, howdy? Just say that. Put your hands on your chest and say, howdy. howdy. If you feel it vibrating in your chest, then you're in what's called your chest voice. Raise your hand, say howdy again. Howdy. howdy. If you say, and you don't get any rumble in your chest. Anybody there? Okay. Now put your hand on the person just to the right of you. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now say howdy <laughs> all right the next thing that I want you to be able to do is to say howdy, howdy. 
Oh, that's pretty good. Say, how did... No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. It's a, it's a higher quality voice. It's up in the top of your range. But it has less to do with how high you are in your pitch, but how your vocal folds are set up. And when, when you happen to be in that light voice, this is where you guys are going to uh, want to pay close attention. When you get in that high voice, somehow the arrangements in your vocal folds change. And instead of being thick from top to bottom, your vocal folds thin out, and they kind of look like two little wedges, and they vibrate right at their edges. And so there are, there are some comfort zones and then some discomfort zones. And that discomfort is when you fellas get your voice out into that thin range. And it, it, you haven't been there since puberty, and it, it, you're a little afraid that somebody might fear that you're something other than what you really are. And so many men stay way far away from that transition. I want you to say again, this is men's activities now. Men, just put your hand on your chest and say, Howdy. Howdy. Now say, Howdy. Howdy. Well, it's not quite. Now listen, you listen, you listen here to me for a second, and then we'll come back and have you do it again. Low, Howdy. And you can, can you all, when I say that, can you all feel a sympathetic vibration in your chest? Hear it, hear it again. Howdy. Howdy. Now, howdy. 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 Now you're sort of in a kind of a, a, still a speaking range. You still get some vibrations in your chest, but now you're starting to get some vibrations somewhere else. Somebody want to tell me where it's coming from? When you say howdy, where does it, where does it vibrate? Nostrils. Nostrils, your mouth, bridge of the, the, the false bridge, in your teeth, the, the cheekbones that general range, down in this range, it kind of picks up a little bit of the head and some of the chest. Everybody with me on that one? Try it again. Middle. Howdy. Okay, now that's something that you say when somebody's a little ways off and you're kind of interested in talking to them. Howdy, how are you? I want to talk to you. I got some, some property I want to sell you. That's a, that's a range that we're all comfortable with using. Now this next range is the kind of sound that you make when Kentucky beats Utah. How... No, it just happened recently. I had to throw that in. I've been thinking about that all week long. <laughs> but it's up in there. Anybody talk that way? Howdy. Howdy. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a, a holler or a shout without any pain associated with it. Try it again. We think. We'll try it. Howdy. Howdy. Okay, all of you can find it. Oh, look what I've got here. I can walk. <laughs> You're not tied down anymore. Thank you. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to, now, you watch out. Here I come. <laughs> Say again. Howdy. Howdy. You all, ladies, you heard that. That's the range that allows you to sing the notes that most of you want to be able to sing and can't do it. It's that simple. Okay, you can all leave now, and I'll go back and get some nap. No, it's a little more complicated than that. Try it again. Howdy. Howdy. Good. Sound. Count to five for me. One, two, three, four, five. Whoa. No, I'm not kidding. That's it. That's as, it's as simple as that. Now tell me, any one of you, raise your hand, tell me what that feels like. Nasal. Some people say that it sounds nasal. Come on out here. <laughs> this is Doc. Okay, Doc, we're, we're going to find out if this is nasal. Would you count to five up in that range? One, two, three, four, five. How about one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five. You notice he went one, two, three. There's a comfort zone here. Now, no, no, you're not going away here. Oh. Hang on here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're going to come right out here where everybody can see, and we're going to kind of rotate around the middle. Did you try that again, Doc? One, two, three, four, five. All right, that is nasal. Now let's find out if that has to be nasal. Pinch your nose and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> you all heard the tone, you've all heard the term honky before, haven't you? <laughs> well, it has to do with our language patterns, and it, we deserve that name because most Americans do talk in our nose, some. Now, if you pinch your nose and go... Oh, one doesn't do it. Let's try it on two. Two. See, there's no honky in there. Three. No honky. Four. None. Five. 
All right, the only place he gets stuck is on one because the end requires the sound to go up in your nose and it, it honks in there. Are you, are you excited? Am I excited? Yeah. I'm not excited. Why, why don't you get excited and count to five? Why should I get excited? Because <laughs> if you don't, because if you don't, you can't sing those high notes. <laughs> Actually, good songs have high notes written there on purpose. And they get them written there because they're supposed to be the high point of the song. And so if you kind of get phlegmatic and laid back, you won't get the energy to get there. Try it again. One, One two, three, four, five. All right. Now, when you... Thank you, Doc. When, when you're doing that, folks, when you, when you gentlemen were standing around listening to Doc sweat through that thing, what did you feel like? Where were the vibrations? Maybe I'd ask Doc. Where were those vibrations? The vibrations were up in here. When, yeah, that, they'll be able to tell that on the on the tape real well. Would you want to be more specific? Up, up in the in the nasal or pharyngeal yeah. area. Way up in the head. Yeah, up in the up in the bones of the face. Now, gentlemen, put your hands on your chest one more time and try this once again. Up in that range, count to five. One, two, three, four, five. How many of you felt resonance in your chest? Little bit. Less than before. Now come back down here and go, howdy. howdy. One, two, three, four, five. How many find this to be uncomfortable? Unfamiliar maybe, but not uncomfortable. It doesn't hurt. And therein lies the secret of your success. If you, can, if you can allow yourselves to make those sounds and allow for the unfamiliarity of it, it will, no, it will not be a problem for you. We'll come back to you guys in a second. Ladies, step forward. This is a much smaller circle. Oh, I saw that. This was the niftiest, niftiest little picture. Ladies, step forward. Now, only, only the ones that really want to sing have to do this, but the rest of you ought to pretend like you want to. Come on, we've got to make a circle here so I can get around the circle. Because for most of you ladies, the issue is different. The, for most of you, it's finding the bottom part of your voice that's the most essential. You fellas have the advantage in the low part of your range because that's where you talk all the time. And so the muscles that are inside your throat are already well accustomed to that kind of shape. The round, thick shape is where your vocal folds are when you're down in that chesty range when it vibrates in your chest. These ladies are more accustomed to their voices being shaped in that wedging shape so, so that to find this other is as hard for them as it is for you to find the thin wedge shape. And that's the challenge for you. You ladies that are trying to call know that if you speak in too high of a voice, it is unpleasant for the dancers to listen to for too long of a period of time. That doesn't mean to say that you have to pitch everything down low and force it. But if you can find this part of your range, you'll be a whole lot better off. whole lot better off. Now, would you say for me, howdy? Howdy. Say. You know, in the 18th century, there was a rule of thumb. I'm an opera singer, and in the, the 18th century, the opera said... Any woman that could find her chest voice was no longer a virgin. <laughs> you know, everybody sort of takes a step back and says, Oh, oh shucks. But, uh, but what I, I'm making a joke to kind of get over to the front, that that part of your voice is what makes you sound like a woman. And when you sound the other way, you sound like a little girl. Or you sound like my mother. No, my mother is actually a wonderful woman. But you know what it's like when your mother says, Clean that room up! And somehow she doesn't use, Clean that room up. And when my father would say, You better, I'd say, I better. And, and when, when my mother said, Why don't you? I'd say, I'll forget it. And I wouldn't do it. And that's kind of what happens to you ladies when you're calling a dance. And you say, Adam and left. And if you don't, I'll take away your allowance. All of a sudden, the motivation is somehow different. So, ladies, let's start up in the range that you're most comfortable with. Would you say, howdy? howdy. Way up there. Howdy. howdy. Now, you, 
Boy, what a timid crowd. <laughs> Let's try it again. Howdy. Happy. Up there, come on. Howdy. Okay, here's a good example. You are Jodine. Say that. Jodine. No, up high. Howdy. Howdy. That's, that is what's called head voice. Let's figure out why. What does it feel like? It's all up here. It's in her head. Fancy that. When you get, that's exactly right. When you get in that thin wedging shape in your vocal folds, that's the sensation that your body produces. Say howdy for me. Howdy. No, up high. Howdy. So, okay. She doesn't like to do that very much. Can, can, you, can you say that like a ditz would? Like a ditzy lady and like, ding dong. <laughs> of course not. There. Excuse me. Excuse me. Jodine did that so well, but I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Some people come at it more naturally than others. But we always have a. St we always start out with a stereotype of the macho man and the dingbat girl. And. And so by, by playing to those stereotypes, we can sometimes find stuff that we wouldn't otherwise be able to find. So can you, can you play the Miss Flirt? Howdy. See, she can. I just had to put it in the right terminology. Which one do you want? I want... <laughs> Here's a woman that can be anything that you want her to be. Howdy. Oh, the, the D part of that was just right. You hear it change? Howdy. Now put all of it up there. Howdy. All right. Now that, that's the sound that you ladies are trying to avoid when you're you know, square dance calling. You want the lower side. So put your hands on your chest and say, howdy. Howdy. Good. Now say, howdy. 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 You still getting some vibration in your chest, are you? Okay, here's somebody that says no. Let's work on this just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, you keep your hand there. I'll keep my hand here. <laughs> uh, unless you need some help. <laughs> Howdy. Low. Howdy. Feel it vibrate in your chest? Yes. A little higher? Howdy. How about... Howdy. Howdy. Still in your chest a little bit? Okay, say so that range. Uh, the, the, that sort of middle. Howdy. You feel it vibrate? Howdy. Higher. Howdy. Howdy. Feel it? Just a tiny bit. Higher. Howdy. None at all. Right. Now there's a terminal, there's a spot where that seems to terminate. And for some of you ladies, it terminates quicker. If you're used to talking in your high voice then you carry that quality down as low as you comfortably can and then you flip over into that sort of more heavy voice. And it, you can actually learn to integrate those two things together and that's going to be part of what we're going to do today is to learn how to carry that sound with you throughout the range. Anybody else have any trouble finding that, that perception, that heading, heady quality? Okay, good. Low. Hi. Say low. Hello. But low. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Would you dance to that? <laughs> Put your hand on your chest. Do that again. Hello. Can you feel it vibrate in your chest? A uh, um, she says a little bit. Now that those muscles that cre create that low quality also have the nickname of being the muscles of intensity, meaning that the louder you go, the more those muscles have a tendency to want to kick in. Now, I won't give you the names of the muscles particularly, but they're called the chest voice muscles or the muscles of intensity. So you saw how gently she spoke. Why don't you say that with a little more aggressiveness? Hello. 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 More. Hello. More. Hello. Can you, do you get more vibration in your chest when you do that? Uh, stronger. 
Exactly. It's stronger. That's precisely right. Because she's using the muscles that will cause that to happen. Let's go higher in your voice range. Hello. But keep it intense. Hello. Louder. Hello. Hello. Are you able to, as it got louder, did you feel the vibrations in your chest at all? Hmm. Is your, do you have a husband here? Oh, now she's motivated to find out. Hello? Yes. I thought she'd discover that. <laughs> now we're going to go a little higher. Hello? A little higher. Hello? Now you'll notice that's the same pitch. Now she's playing with loudness. And that's a, that's a viable way to do it. But let's go up. Hello? Hello? Higher? 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 Hey! Okay, so now she's, she's demonstrated something that the gentlemen already know, and that is when you get into that voice range, you come up to a certain place and you just can't go higher than that. It just cuts off. That's as far as the muscle will take you. So you've got this one... Thank you very much, ladies. You can stretch out, gentlemen, up on your feet again. When you... For the best vocal health of all... The wise position is not to either take the low voice and carry it all the way up or the high voice and carry it all the way down, but to learn how to mix those two muscles together in a kind of a mixed voice. Now listen for just a second, and I'll try to demonstrate some, some of these sounds. Here's the low. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. You can feel that. If you're, if you're looking to feel it, you can feel that vibrate sympathetically in your chest, I feel in my chest, somewhat in my throat, but as I go higher, hello, one, two, three, four, five, I don't just feel it in my chest, but I begin to feel it in my face as well. It begins to have a little bit of head quality and a majority of chest quality. When I go higher yet, up in that range, then I get predominantly head quality with just a little bit of chest left over in it. And so I'm mixing those sounds together. Can you distinguish how this still sounds like me, but it's not this. It isn't just the pitch, although it's, it's governed somewhat by the pitch. I'm down here, it's vibrating in my chest. I'm here, and I'm vibrating in the middle of my face. Now watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it just in my chest voice, but keep it on the same pitch range as I change from one to the other of those registers. Here, here I am in my chest voice. One, two, three, four, five. All the vibrations are in my chest, and some of it, no, it's all right here in my chest. Now I'm going to change and mix together, and I get this kind of a quality. One, two, three, four, five, and now I'm getting vibrations in my face as well as my chest. Now I know how to manipulate that because I've been playing with it for a number of years, but I think it would be a good idea if you could figure out how to do that because the ability to mix together those two voices is going to be really helpful to you to gain a wider range. Would you, gentlemen, now try counting to five in your low voice? One, two, three, four, five. That's really virile. Okay, now up a little ways, about half an octave. But still, keep it in your chest voice. Keep it vibrating in your chest. Go right about that range. One, two, three, four, five. But you didn't come up where I am in pitch. You stayed down there. Would you come up where I am? Go. One, two, three, four, five. Did you keep it in your chest primarily, or did it, yeah, um, did it just sort of migrate up into your face a little bit more than you had expected it to? Raise your hand if you started to get it migrating up into your face. Okay, raise your hand if you were able to keep it down in your chest range. Okay, gentlemen, try it again. Low. One, two, three, four, five. Now try to move up a range, but keep it low in your chest. One, two, three, four, five. Did you do better that time? It should have kept it there. You do have the ability to isolate a little bit. All you have to do is experiment. Now it gets a little harder because what I'm asking you to do is what you ought not to do. I'm showing you how not to do this. When I show you how to do it, then it'll make better sense. 
Now go up in here and try to keep it down in your chest. And you can hear that this isn't easy to do. Sounds a little like Walter Brennan. Okay, try it. One, two, three, four, five. And if you had to f call a dance for three hours, you'd make it about an hour and a half. Of course, if you only have two or three songs that you have to get your way through in the course of that three-hour dance, maybe you could get away with that. But that's not the right way to do it. And that's one of the reasons that you get trapped. All of you could feel like you were in first gear running about 35 miles an hour. That's not supposed to happen. Instead, there's a shift that occurs about a third of the way up the range, and that shift allows the sound to come up into the bones of your face a little bit. It's not because the bones of the face are actually doing it. That's just how we feel it. It's actually occurring right down in the cartilage of the larynx with a couple of little small muscles that are making that adjustment. Now, gentlemen, once again, ladies, those of you that are on the inclined toward a heavy voice, and are trying to find up her voice, you can play this game too. Again, gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five. Now as we go up, let it migrate up into your mouth and into your cheekbones and into your nose. One, two, three, four, five. Now you ladies that are listening can hear that that's a whole lot easier to listen to and a lot less tense than it was when they were trying to drive first gear up too high. Next one is up in here and now it's sort of up around the eyeballs area and you get less in your chest this is the kind of thing where you say hey you idiot get off the road this is road rage voice <laughs> ready go one two three four five if you have that voice all except the various very highest calls will be accessible to you but you know what you have to permit yourselves to do that and I'm hoping as we experiment along through the day, you won't be intimidated by that voice anymore. Just to assist you in that way, I'm going to allow each one of you to go on microphone. <laughs> right up in there! Right up in there! You got it. One, two, three. He made it. One, two, three. It's all right. One, two, three. Stuck a little bit, aren't you? Okay, get up in there. Right up there, like you're going to talk in your nose. Try it again. One, One two, two, three. One. One. Okay, now you just have to get excited. It's you remember <laughs> basketball or mm, whatever. One. Pretty good. No, you finish it. Okay. One, two, three. That's not easy, is it? That we're going to come back to that as the time goes by. Not that you that subject. One, two, three. Way up. Way up. One, two, three. Did you hear him yodel just for a second? <laughs> that, that's a perfectly natural thing because when you change registers, suddenly you'll get a yodel. For, the, for a matter of fact, those who are yodelers do the reverse of what we're doing. They split the registers apart and they get really good at flipping back and forth and finding pitch across it. We look at that and we think, my, what a remarkable talent. And it is a remarkable talent. But it's not what you guys need right now. One, two, three, four, five. There's a guy that plays a uh, good spectator sport, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am? No. Hi. One, two, three. Now, there, there you have an interesting dilemma. It's, it's strong, isn't it? And that's, what, that's a strategy that many of you gentlemen use when you're trying to go high. You just sing harder. Because what happens is by, you, by putting more pressure on the underside of your vocal folds, you can actually make your vocal folds bow up this way. And by making them bow that way, pitch will go up a little bit. So you, you win, but the pressure that's underneath your vocal cords will tire you. And that's one of the reasons why folks that use that strategy frequently poop out after a while. So instead of singing so loud, you just try to go high. One, two, three... Now, did you notice he made it? But there was a yodel associated with it. And after the yodel happened, he never would go up in that range again. And the same is true for most of you gentlemen. Take that one that was above that little yodel spot and stay there. One, two, three. <laughs> Try it one more time. But, but keep it in that range. That, so it's a real voice. 
One. One, two, three. Now he's in falsetto. That's the male head voice. One, that. One, 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 Speak. 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 Speak higher. Speak. Speak. It won't go any higher. Yeah. And that's exactly right. It won't go any higher as long as he's in that other register. And that's where so many gentlemen have their trouble, is they get, they get that chesting voice and get up to the top of where the chesting voice will work, and that's the end of the range. But if you can figure out how, like these other fellows were doing, to slip past that, you may succeed. Here's a little trick to help you. I'm going to get you to demonstrate it. Come on out here in the center here. And then I'm going to get all of you gentlemen to try it. The first one is, I want you to just do a lip buzz for me. I'll show it to you. With sound. With sound. And with buzzing lips. <laughs> this, this is one of those old crank automobiles. That are... out of breath. Now notice that he was very successful with that lip buzz but he wouldn't go down to the bottom of his range. He got into that upper range, and that's actually an easy place to buzz his lips. But he goes, there's more at the bottom. Oh, yeah? Okay, that's actually very good. Thank you very much. Everybody, gentlemen, try that. One of the things that comes from a lip buzz, gentlemen, is that <laughs> it's spring and the butterflies have come out. <laughs> the bees are buzzing. Yeah. Okay, now what happens there is that when you get a stream of air started and coming out and you close your lips, the stream will cause your lips to open, and then as the air escapes out your lips, there's a suction that's created and your lips are popped back closed. So your lips will blabber just as long as there's enough air to trigger those things in motion. Incidentally, that same principle works on how come your vocal cords work. But if you get to the point where you cannot go through that range and all of a sudden your lips stop vibrating like this. At some point, your lips may discontinue their buzzing, which simply means that the stream of air has changed, whether you intended it or not. Ladies, you get up in this one, because this is applicable to you as well. If your lips stay buzzing all the way through, then the little mechanics in your throat and in your lips are staying the same. That's a good sign. So you want to keep your lips buzzing all the way through. Everybody, please, start at the top and buzz all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top again. Go. When I do that, in my own voice, I feel two distinctive voices. I feel this voice, and then I feel, I feel two voices. Try that again, and raise your hand if you feel two voices. Go. All human beings, raise your hands if you feel that as a high voice and a low voice. Anybody feel anything more than that? Traditionally, that's what is, is that there's a, there's a muscle that controls the high part of your voice and a muscle that controls the low part. Then, but the sophistication of singing, then, as adults, gets the way you can overlap those two voices, the high voice and the low voice, in the middle. They overlap each other, and they get what's called as a mixed range. And it's the finding of that mixed range that allows you to really get access to your full voice. Okay, let's, here we go. What do you want? I want you to, oh, I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, hi, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. That's good, okay. One, two, three. You're sort of stuck just like the fellow was, right? You like right at the top. Can you yeah. feel that? Yeah. Can you go up in there? Higher. One, two, three. Now, he's, he's training at it, he's working, but he's actually getting it. He's getting it, but the part of the discomfort is as much psychological as it is physical. It's a strange place to be. Please. One, two, three. All right. Do you feel any strain in that? Yes. Where? He feels strain. Where do you feel it? I think in my head. 
somewhere. Yeah, and, and that, that strain may not as, be as much physical as it is emotional. Because if you've, if you've been living all of your life with the vibrations in your voice down in your chest and in the lower part of your mouth, and then all of a sudden you're called on to let the vibrations migrate up into the top of your head, it's an unfamiliar experience. When boys go through adolescence, they want to stay as far away from the child's voice as they possibly can. So they drive their voice to the bottom and never return. And then later on, in uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, that range, you want to sing and you want to gain reaccess to that voice. It's a range that has not been used for a long period of time, and therefore the coordination is not as strong. The coordination actually will come very quickly if the mind can tolerate the possibility of those vibrations, and you just did it. One, two, three. Did you notice that there was much less strain that time? All that had to happen was for Ken to give himself permission to sing in that range. And he just did it, and it was much less threatening than the first time. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. Go higher. I'm, I'm picking on him because I could tell that he's really not out in, at his extreme. One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. Now, how about one, two, three? Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I let him off the hook because there aren't any songs that make you go that high. One, two, three. Now that's a falsetto voice. And that's the voice that you use for comic effect. That's the child's voice translated into a grown man. And most of us don't want to do that. And, and, and callers don't want to hear that too much. There's not enough authority in it. So you want to keep your regular full voice. But, but pitching up higher. This is now automatic transmission. This is highway gear. One, two, three. Drop it lower. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> That's all right. Now he's down in his chest voice. He's sort of in his first gear. Mo move it up to the second gear. Right up in there. One, two, Just three. Say, count to five with me. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five. Now he's fine and he just has to play a little bit. Try it. One, two, three, four, five. You're in your you're in your head voice right now in the falsetto voice. Drop it down into your speaking voice. One, two, three, four, five. Now stay with that. You can feel that vibrate in your chest, right? Climb it up a little higher so that you're getting it in here. One, One two, two, three, four, five. He's getting it. Now the next range is up in here. One, two, two three. No, oops. Now we now it's flipping over to that other side. Trying to keep them connected, can you? I don't know. <laughs> Just imitate, if you will. One, 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 one. He's getting there. One, 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 one. All right. That's the same dilemma. As, as the several other gentlemen that we've just felt. And it's a, a, a climatization. Boy, it's going to take me forever. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm not going to get around to you on this exercise. The hour would be over before we were done. You're broken hearted. <laughs> I can tell. Okay, ladies. Let's figure out how you can develop a strategy to develop those, those alternate ranges. I'd like to suggest to you that the first thing that you want to do is to find access to those various ranges in your voice and you can do that while you're driving down the street with the windows rolled up of course <laughs> or in the shower so long as everybody else is out of the house or any other place that you have the courage to try it and you just have to find those sounds in your voice you find the chest voice shaw try it please shaw now you move up about a, a half an octave Shaw. Shaw. Most of you can find that. Shaw. Shaw. And some of you find that harder. You gentlemen have a tendency to want to flip into your falsetto at that point. And instead, I suggest that you try to keep it in your, your, your masculine voice, but modulate it up. Shaw. Shaw. This is your, what's called your call voice. This is the voice you call with when you're trying to get people to hear you over a long distance. And then the other range that's more challenging is the top range. I call that my hysterical voice. You have to get really mad in order to get up in that range. You have to get excited. You have to be a preacher or you've got to be something, you know. So try that. 
Shaw! Shaw! Whoa. Hey, all right. All right, ladies, your turn. Come on up. <laughs> We're going to go on the opposite end of this thing now. Opposite end. Top. Shaw! Shaw! Yeah, that's the voice you don't want to use. If you want to try to get that to work better, use a greater degree of intensity. Sing with more intensity, not with sweetness. Try it. Sha! Again. Sha! Again. Again. Drop it down now. Sha! That's the sound that you're going to use when you're calling. Not that other voice, that mixed voice. Try it again. Sha! Sha! A little higher. Sha! All right, but don't let it flip over. Here we got a good example. Luella? Sha! Okay, that's a woman's head voice. Drop it down into your chest. Shaw. 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 Which one do you want to use? This one. I mean, <laughs> the lower. Drop lower yet. Shaw. Shaw. That's her chest voice. That other sound that she got was her middle voice. Try it again, Luella, the middle voice. Shaw. That's a middle voice. That's the voice that you're going to want to use when you're calling. That and the lower voice. The higher voice doesn't doesn't have enough command in it. Try it again. Sure. All right. Good. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You know, I wanted to have her do that three or four times because without any coaching from me, each person can fix their own sound. It doesn't feel particularly comfortable. It yodels. It's, it strains just a little bit. And all of a sudden, you don't want to do it anymore. We've been here, so we've been here, we've been here. Here, we haven't been yet. We haven't been here. Shaw. Shaw. That's got it. Shaw. Shaw. Higher. Shaw. Higher. Shaw. <laughs> now she flipped. <laughs> now what? we've got a lady that's got two registers in her voice, high voice and low voice. Let's find the mixing of that, and here's how you do it. Everybody, slide with me. You find the bottom one. Shaw. 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 Now slide between them. Shaw. That's excellent. But sometimes you'll see people do this. Shaw. And they'll kind of choreograph what pitch they're on. By so doing, you're taking muscles that are underneath your chin, associated with your tongue, and you're moving your larynx up and down. And that's not the way to solve this problem. Try it again, please. Middle to low. Shaw. Gentlemen, come up and form a, a circle around behind the ladies. Then the next range is the upper middle. That part right up in there. Shaw. Hold on. Shaw. 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 That's good. Who wants to try the top? If you will, join with me. Shaw. Shaw. Listen for a second. It is not this voice. It's not, Shaw, Shaw. It's not that. That hurts. That strains. And that tension that's in there will communicate to your dancers. They don't like that. That makes them on edge whether they know it or not. Instead, if you can modulate your voices so that you can get up to that top note up in there, then you have access to that rain. Would you try that if you want to? Go. Now, all of a sudden, that was a whole lot better. Each one of you has to define in your own mind how you did what you did. It really isn't very sophisticated. And yet it's maybe new, and because it's new, it may seem strange. But strange is only from lack of familiarity, not from ability to do. So if you can conceive it, if you can do it, you should be able to do it again. Now, I've just been sort of blabbering away here. I don't know how we're doing. We've got about half an hour. How about if we do some singing of songs, shall we? And we'll just kind of pitch songs a little bit. Anybody got a song you want to sing? Before we get together. Okay. I'm going to pitch it here. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. 
For your friend, dear, my friend, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Gentlemen, that was probably an easy range for you. Anybody have any trouble with that lowness? Some of you did. When you sing, the more we get together, together, together. It's that together, together. That's the greatest challenge of all. For you women and men who are having a little bit of trouble finding those low notes, pay, take your fingers, place them on your larynx. You'll find your larynx by coming underneath your tongue, underneath the double chin that's just below it. And you'll, and you'll feel a little bit of cartilage that sort of sticks out. For gentlemen, it's your Adam's apple. Right above your Adam's apple. And you'll feel a slight, you should feel a slight indentation there. For some folks, the muscles that control that part of the throat are so developed that you can't have a hard time finding it. But it looks like you're all in approximately the right place. And when you go down to that low note, many of you will feel that little indentation disappear. It'll, there's something above. It's a bone. It's called the hyoid bone, and it's right at the base of your tongue. And then there's the larynx. And there's a little indent indentation right there. And when some people go to that low note, that area s uh, squeezes together and it cuts them off of that low note. Ladies, this will be the same thing for you. So try it again and see if that will help. Try to keep that space the same as you go to the low notes. Go. We won't sing the chorus of this thing, just the beginning. Go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Was that any easier that time? Not really. Was it any easier that time? Not really. Okay, those are harder things to solve, and maybe we can t spend a minute at the end with you two fellas and any of the rest of you. How about you ladies? Anybody have trouble getting that? Everybody got that. That's actually very good. That means that you do have access to that range. Let's pitch it up. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Anybody have any trouble with that range? That probably was the comfort zone for most people. Not too high, not too low. Let's go a little higher. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Anybody have any? Oh, I heard some harmonization in there. And I know enough about square dance callers that harmony just isn't because we're making harmony. <laughs> it's because we're looking for alternate notes. Aha! Uh -huh. You had a little trouble there, you said. What happened to it? Strain in your throat? Yeah. Strain. Would you say that again? <laughs> I thought that deserved that that deserved to get on the tape. But you remember that the the thing that we talked about is that you gain access to that range by permitting the sensations that go along with that range. And most of us who can't touch into those ranges don't do so because we have taboos written up all over them. I can't go into that range because they'll not like my singing voice. I can't go into that range because I'll feel it. They'll think I'm effeminate. They'll, I can't go in that range because they won't choose me for the football team. I mean, they're way old kind of taboos left from a long time ago that still keep us from going into that range. You'll remember that earlier on when we were just doing the simple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 range, when we got up in that range, it vibrated right through here and didn't vibrate down on our chest the same way that we were accustomed to having it to be. If you can now count to 5 in that range, you can sing this tune in that range with the difference being that the tune is longer and you have to tolerate, you have to suspend your judgment for a longer time. Count to five. Up in this range. One, two, three, four. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Did you have any more success that time? She did. I was watching her, and her comfort zone was a whole lot better. Why? Because she discovered that it was okay to do that. Her body is ready to make that sound, 
and all of a sudden she has access to a wider range. Now, did she go up into the lady's head voice? I don't think so. She used that range that's kind of a mix together. Everybody, let's go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. That's right. Now we're going to change the word. The higher we go now. No, we want... We're going a little higher. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. I don't count. I've got an awful hard goal. So. You know what? That's a great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to sing it in that same pitch range. <laughs> And I, I, I just want you to see what's going on. He's not unique. What's your name? Slim Sterling. Okay, Slim. Slim's not unique. He's just uh, a good exemplar of what's going on here. Same pitch range. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. I chose Slim on purpose because this is the one of the solutions that men use frequently when they're trying to get up into those notes. Slim shortened. Now he doesn't have much for me to get a hold of here, but he takes. Let me let me just play a little bit here. He does that with his head whenever he's starting to go for high notes. He, the, the back of his neck shrinks down. The muscles right here grab a hold, and then these muscles that are right under his chin serve to stretch the larynx to try to reach out for those high notes so that you get the more we get together together more we get together and it's a strategy that will make the pitch but it also makes some other byproducts that are not so readily great so here we're going to go back to the postural thing push against my head put push your head against my hand right now and so, yeah, you see what I'm doing? I'm not, I want you to stand up straight, but I want you, those muscles to be shrunk down. Now, we're going to sing it in the same pitch range, only this time, Slim. Just see what happens if you're not allowed to stick your chin out. He may hate me for this, but we're going to try. Go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Now, I'm not going to put any pressure on Slim anymore because I can hear that he really does have some swelling in his throat, and that makes it hard for him to do. But there were some adjustments that went on right then, weren't there? Yes. Instead of it feeling like it was stuck down in your mouth, all of a sudden it started vibrating up here in the bridge of your face, up the uh, bridge of your nose, the cheekbones. And that, and that resonance pattern was an indication that you had gotten your throat in the right place. Thanks, Thank Slim. You. Thank you. Okay, anybody got a different song they want to sing? I'm sorry? I don't know that one. I can't believe I don't. With as many children as I have, I can't believe I don't know that song. Okay, row, 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 you wrote. That's fun. We'll, we'll have some fun with this one, but we're going to start down at the bottom of the falls, okay? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Now, if you were really watching that thing, you would have felt yourselves go chest, 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 middle, 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 chest, middle, middle, chest, or something like that. But you're so used to using those parts of your voices that you're not aware that that's the adjustment that's going on. Now that I've told you about it, sing it and see what you get. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Is that accurate? Is that kind of what you saw happening? Jump up a little higher. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. All of a sudden, the merrily, merrilies, without your having any control of it, put you in that range that you don't like to sing in. And yet you were, as a whole crowd, very successful at it. Individually, it's hard to tell. Let's try it one more time. Go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. 
Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. When you were singing merrily, merrily, did you feel some pressure up around your eyes? Kind of make you feel like you wanted to go cross-eyed? No, didn't feel that. Well, some of you say yes, you know, just what I'm talking about. Somebody else went, I don't get that one at all. Listen, row, I'm going to sing now. Row, row, row your boat. That's right in this middle range. Ja, huh. Gently down the stream, merrily. Now, what is that? That's just, all that is, is head. That's male head voice. Merrily, merrily, merrily. You hear it migrate? Hear it shift? Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. And so that's my voice, but that's the various ranges of my voice, gentlemen. That's the same. Ladies, sing. Row. Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Stop. No fair. Move it up an octave. Okay? Up in the regular range. Row, row, go. But now, now when she's... This is a wonderful example. Cal? Yes. That, I, that's right, right? That's right. Okay. Cal doesn't like to sing in that range. She's been hammered on it for a number of occasions. Now, Cal, take that same pitch that you didn't like to sing just now and wanted to put down an octave. Stay in that range, but sing it with more intensity. Because when you sing with more intensity, it forces the muscles that are the chesting muscles to participate more, and you get a more equalized voice. Try it, and let's see what happens. Everybody join, and I'll, I'll stick the mic in her face when she's least expecting it. Ready? Row, row. Row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Okay, here we go again, everybody. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. 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 Now, I don't know if you could tell. What I heard was that the first one was a bit timid. It wasn't timid, really. It just sounds that way. And it was the head voice. And it's kind of like, would you please dance? Please, I don't want to be too aggressive, but if you don't mind. <laughs> and that's, that nobody buys. But as she goes into it a little more intensely, then there's greater possibility. Now, she's accustomed, because of her experience in calling, to drop way down in the chesting range. And you have access to it, and there's no reason why not to. It just limits your range, that's all. Okay, ladies, one more time. Let's drop it down a little bit. Row, row, row your boat. Gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Okay, now just for the fun of it, so that I can get around the circle, would you ladies start? Then, would you ladies get the round to here? And then you ladies make the third part of the round. Ready? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Row, row, row your... Row... That's great. Gentlemen, trade places with them. <laughs> I, was, I was really impressed by the fact that as the ladies sang and as I was able to walk around, I heard all of the ladies using a kind of an easy modulation as they had to go through that variety of ranges. Gentlemen, let's sing it through ourselves once, and then we'll divide up in rounds. We do. It's a little... Of course, men don't know how to make circles. That's right. Men, men only know how to make squares. Or, or pinhead kind of. No, squares, we'll leave it at that.
Okay, gentlemen, right here. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. I just heard something that I want to comment on. Some gentlemen, when they're trying to go up to the high voice, will try to find it by increasing the amount of pressure that they put on it. If you put your hand on your tummy and you're getting ready to go merrily, 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 some of you will tighten up harder or push harder with your breath at that point. Would you check that and see? Go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Raise your hands if you changed your, the pressure in your stomach. Just a few of you did. This time, for those of you that did, the, the goal is don't change the breath pressure. You say, well, that's how I change pitch. And exactly so. My suggestion to you is to take that tool away, and then your body will find some other way to get that pitch, and it'll be more likely to be right than that approach. We're going to raise the pitch just a little bit. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Here's where we're going to start, and we'll carry to right about here. First, crowd. From here to right about here. Second crowd, the rest of you. Where did we start? All right, so you guys are the third crowd. Gentlemen, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Okay, we, uh, that had to be some place. You guys kept going to Merrily, Merrily, just a little bit ahead of when I could get there. But from what I could hear, I heard well-modulated voices. Let me ask you if you have questions related to the things that we've been talking about in this last hour and a half or so. There are just a few minutes left in our session. I hear you being quite successful at the things that uh, I wanted to, you to try to accomplish today. But you may not feel so successful. So indiv individually, ask questions, ladies or men, if it'll be helpful. Yeah, I've got a question. I've got a higher voice, and sometimes I can, it peaks out. I've noticed it uh, within the past two, three months. I was, I was doing a song. Um, I was over at a friend's house, and he asked me to do a pitch higher uh, for a song, and it actually came out, which it was hidden back behind. So I've been playing with it for the, ever since. You just kind of stumbled onto that stuff that we've been doing today, and it didn't turn out to be so hard. It was just an accidental discovery, right? Once you make that discovery, you can, still, you can now use that along with the other stuff. In finding those higher notes, did you lose anything off the bottom? No. All right, that's a good sign. Here's another question. Does your voice change with age, or is it just the application that changes? It's primarily the application that makes the difference. There are a few little things that can happen to a man's voice or a woman's voice in the extremes of old age. Uh, 65, 70, 75, it's hard to tell exactly, but, but I don't hear anybody in this room that um, show any tendencies that way. Once you've hit puberty, and from that, per that period of uh, onward, you, it's, it has more to do with uh, continual use than it does changes that occur as a result of age. What kinds of, things, what kinds of things can you do to wreck your voice, or do we do to wreck our voices? One of the things that will be mo that's most damaging to a voice is to push your voice. There are a variety of sounds that can be made. Let me show them to you and have you try them out. The first one is called pressing phonation. And it is this kind of sound. Would you all count to five that way? One, two, three, four, five. And if you do that, it won't last very long. 
Some people will do this. They'll do this because they think it makes them sound more powerful. But it just makes them sound more constipated. <laughs> Can you permanently damage it or is it temporary? There are two answers to that question. The most common answer is that it's not permanent. The, the muscles in your throat the, the, on the cell level will regenerate like many others. It's only nerve ending nerve muscles that don't normally regenerate. However, constant and perpetual abuse will lead a person to the position where they think they can't do it anymore because they've done it wrong so many times that it begins to be more of a mental block than it is an actual physical block. And as I've said several times in this session, if you can conceive it to be, it can be. And most often the kind of permanent damage that occurs to people is psychological more than physical. You get to the point where you think, man, I just, it's, I can't do this anymore, and then truly you can't do it anymore. Uh, question. I, I have a slight problem with uh, a little emphysema type thing, and I have a buildup in my throat sometimes. This causes me, of course, then to, to cause my voice. Is there something I can use? Is there a spray? Is there some kind of a thing that I can do prior to using my voice to clear that out of there? Yes, there is. Um, you may want to check with your doctor, but the same kind of um, uh, sort of inhalant steroid that is used by asthma patients might be useful to you because what happens in an emphysema moment or an asthma moment is that the membranes that are in the, the bronchial tubes swell. And as they swell, the passages shrink and you can't get air in or air back out again. Now, I'm not really uh, an expert on emphysema, but an asthma... There are inhalants that you can take that will shrink those membranes and allow you free passage of, of the airways for a, for a period of time. Tell them to, tell them to quit smoking. <laughs> I did that 13 years ago. That's, That's a good question. There. How much should we work on those three octaves? Well, it has an awful lot to do with how much you use them. Uh, you use what you're... I mean, you get good at what you're going to use. And for most of you who are trying to reach the high notes, it constitutes maybe six or seven notes in a whole night, but it's enough to cause you to perspire for the whole night long. I mean, there's a lot of anxiety that's associated with that kind of stuff. What I'd suggest you do is you work on those ranges a lot so that you don't have anxiety about them. You won't use them any more than you did before, but you'll be able to use them with greater comfort. So I would, uh, I would go to the range that you feel the least comfortable with, and I'd start spending some time with it and get to where you're comfortable with it. This should not lead you to vocal strain. If you're getting strained in your throat and your voice is wearing out more quickly, you're not doing something right. You'll note that the time that we've spent together where we've done a lot of singing for an hour and a half, nobody's walking out of here with a tired voice. It's just a modulated voice. It's just allowing your voice to shift gears. I have a lot of trouble with volume. If I typically singing in a high voice and then go into a lo in the low notes, I can't get the volume out. Those, uh, the, the situation that you've just described is very common. When you've got too much pressure coming up out of your lungs and you get your pitch by bowing your vocal folds this way, that creates a tension that when you go down to the low, you lose the bottom. And the extension of range into the top should not come at the expense of the range at the bottom. So, the, in other words, if you go up to that top, you sh still should have access. The best drill for a fellow like yourself to do would be to start low. Oh, 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 and just play back and forth. And you do that, gentlemen. You do that without changing your breath pressure. No, don't tighten up your stomach as you change that range. Try to make your vocal folds do that. Try to make the muscles that control your vocal folds. Ladies, any questions from the, among the ladies? Come. I usually have trouble staying in the middle range. I either go too high or too low. And at that point, people will say, gee, you sounded good. You know, a lot of people when I'm real low, but I, like I had a man come up to me and said, you should sing in the key that you should be in, you know, because I was so low. Because I have a tendency to be real low or real high. And the middle range is hard for me. That's right. It's that mixing range that we were just talking about. And in, in your case, it's the muscles 
don't know quite how to integrate with each other in that middle range, and therefore they fall out of pitch with each other. And so my suggestion to you is to take that area of your voice that's weak and do gliding notes. And then you take the songs that you have that take you into that range, and even without the microphone on, even without the music playing, sing those. Have you got an example of a piece that gives you trouble in that range? I was afraid that would be tough. But that's how you solve it. You just go to this place that you're having trouble and spend a lot of time outside until your voice gets used to it. Be patient with yourselves, folks, because as you try to learn this kind of coordination, your body won't respond immediately all the time. And you'll go through a period of time, much like a person who's learning how to ride a bicycle, or better yet, the person that's learning how to use a standard shift with the clutch. You all remember what that felt like and how awkward that felt. But after the application of those skills for six or you know six weeks to six months, after a while you get to the point where somebody to say to you, in that trip to the store that went over three miles, how many times did you change gears? And it would be a question that no one would be able to answer. They just You don't think about it anymore. It's just automatic. And that's what needs to happen to each of you. If you misfire, don't presume that you have got it all wrong. Do it three, four, five, six times in a row, and if it still persists in being wrong, then you've got the wrong concept in your head. If you've got the right concept, it'll spaz the first time, be semi-awkward the second time, by the third time it'll be sort of online, the fourth time it'll have figured it out, fifth time it'll figure it out, and it'll go that way for several weeks until your body finally acclimatizes itself to the adjustment necessary to solve the problem. So you can solve your own problems, most of them, yourselves, if you'll just have that patience. Sometimes I almost get a panicky feeling with breathing. I mean, I, I try to breathe from down here. But it starts to quiver, and you... Well, and it's, like, like on Row, 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 Your Boat, I would always have to take a, a, a little breath to get that last part out. Yeah, there's a tightness that comes, and it's often associated with anxiety. Sometimes that's anxiety of being in front of people. Other times it's anxiety of getting the right note, the high note, that will cause this part of our body, which incidentally is the place that we breathe from, to tighten up. And when that does, the only solution is to breathe. It's right in the diaphragm that this, this stiffness starts to occur, and the diaphragm is located right here where we breathe. The pancreas is located there, and that it, it secretes the adrenaline that makes us anxious. And so the very first place that it's affecting is right in here. Making sure that you continue to breathe deeply, perhaps even taking the time to breathe through your nose, will cause you to stretch that diaphragm out so that it won't lock and get... Try to do it more from down here than like this. That's right. You want to breathe low, not up in your chest. That's correct. But the anxiety will will challenge you there, so you really do have to work on it. Any other questions? Yes, here's a question, and then... Can yodeling damage the voice? No. It, it just sets you into a pattern where you split your registers apart, and then in this other system that I'm talking about, you try to reintegrate them. And that's... It, it feels as if I were straining something when I change that range. You know, sometimes if you do it incorrectly, you can strain it. But for the, for the people who yodel a lot, it's just a flipping back and forth between those muscles. And in what we've been practicing, it's an integration of those muscles. And so for somebody who is an avid yodeler, this task that we were involved in today could be hard. And for somebody who has worked all their life trying to smooth their voice out and combine those registers together, yodeling becomes a real task because it's going opposite of what you've spent your time developing. But yodeling ought not to hurt you if you're doing it correctly. Other question? By the, by the end of a dance, oftentimes I'm losing my voice by the end of the dance. And I'm like that gentleman, I have asthma and then that drainage going on. I always figure, well, I was just getting hoarse from that. Am I doing something wrong? Probably. And if so, what could I do? Probably you are doing some things that are not exactly right. One of the things you want to do, folks, is to not push your voice. The voc- your vocal folds, you'll, you'll be really surprised at that. A man's vocal folds are no longer than my thumbnail. 
that's really small. You know, it's about half an inch or less. That's how long your vocal folds are. And they're about as wide as my thumbnail, or just a little deeper than that. I mean, they're just real, really narrow things. Those are very, very small pieces of our body. They're, they're reasonably sturdy, but they're capable of being fragile. You can't push them around too much in the short term and have them work. What, where most people do their problem is that they put too much pressure from underneath when they're trying to go for the high note, and they get the high note not by changing gears, but by taking first gear and driving it up at 45 miles an hour. Now, just like your transmission will get overheated if you do that, your throat will get overheated and get tired if you do that. So this little shifting process that we've been practicing is one thing that you do to solve it. Some people, when they go up to that upper range, can't make it, and so they press their voice. You know, this kind of sound right there? And that's also very tiring. And Your vocal folds open and close sort of like this. I'll show you. They just sort of... Um, they, they stay together right at the front, right where your Adam's apple is, and at the back they come apart. But there are some muscles that control as if you could see rubber bands between my thumbs. As those come, those come together, sometimes they push against each other really hard, and that can be very wearying. And some people, when they go into their high voice, will press their voice together in an effort to try to force out high notes. That's not my advice. And the solution to that is to check yourself here at your middle. And if your middle is getting really hard and stiff as you go up to your high notes, don't do it. Keep the pressure that you had in the low part of your voice the same as you go into the high voice. And then force, if you take that tool away, your body's going to have to figure out some other way to get the high note. And pretty soon you'll have figured it out. So I suspect that it's one of the two of those two things that are causing you to be weary by the end and not your asthma nor the post-nasal drip. I'm looking at the clock. If we want to have lunch, then we better quit. I'd be happy to talk to any of you individually if you wish. Thank you all very much.